What's up guys, welcome back, Jano here, as per usual, and do we have a video and a half for you guys today. So I'm in the office, it's late night, it's the end of January, um, it's about to be the new year, and I am so excited, it's not even funny. We are getting ready to start launching some of the public betas for our application at Bricks here, and we have just been grinding for the last six months straight building this thing, and I've been custom tailoring a solution for prompt engineering that solves so many issues. So it's about to become the time where it's my job to teach you guys how to use this thing and show you why it's better, and uh, I don't think I'm gonna have a hard time doing that. but. I'm gonna preface this today. Um, I'm gonna show off some of the other stuff and some of the other projects, because this might be the only chance I get to in the near future to show off some of these things, just because it be, it's gonna be insurmountable how much uh, how busy we're gonna be in the future with this. We're getting into the next year, we're building this team out. The team's already, I think, six strong right now. Um, give or take five, five and a half, uh, five and three quarters. But we're building out the team right now and getting everything ready to scale up. We have a custom, couple customers in, so uh, all I'll say is good, good progress. And I'm gonna fill you guys a bunch in more in the new year on this. But in the time being, I wanna show you guys some cool projects and things I was working on just in like the background. There's some stuff here that I know is never gonna get a video if I don't do this. Um, but a bunch of little things like this that I've been working on, I've been playing a bunch with electromagnetism and other things too in the background. And you'd be surprised, having these AIs and these things working like this has let me just focus on all the stuff I'm working on when I'm at work and these side things I'm going on just printing and developing still haven't stopped. I've had a couple cool ones. This one's even a practical one. Um, even on the design from making some of these parts and pieces, this is a laser optic crystal. We'll get into that in a second, but I just wanna make sure I document all this stuff before it gets too late to ever document. This thing, first off, uh, was really cool. I was playing around with some electromagnetism and some of these chips. Just got really inspired when I saw some of those videos of things floating on the internet, all those stuff. So I wanted to make my own, made my own display stand. This is kind of cool, it just holds this. It's just a just a, a floating one. But this is one of those stereo stereograms, or I forget the actual name. There's some weird name. I'm gonna put it in when I'm editing uh, for these things. But if you balance it right in the middle and then start spinning it, especially on the camera, you're gonna see a really weird effect where, let's see if I can get this. You're gonna see a really weird effect where it starts phasing in and out of sequence where you can start seeing the actual movement. I know, it's kinda of cool, kinda of cool. That one's pretty cool. Um, this one over here is actually this laser crystal thing. And also we had this whole planting system and all this other stuff. God, I know, I wish I could have been tracking all these projects and I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to you guys that I haven't been full on tracking and full on going for some of this stuff. Um, it has been, when I see so much work going nonstop, <laughs> this thing even fell off, so much work going nonstop while I'm working on this stuff that it, it's hard to even document and, and record. So this is actually a spawn from something really interesting we were working on. We have a guy, and this is something I, I splurged on by my own myself, but I definitely branded it with bricks. Um, these are some chips and some boards we've been playing with and working on. One of the things that I really prioritize, and this is kind of something in the future we're gonna work on a bunch, hopefully, but is the actual interaction space for the AIs and the LLMs. So we deal primarily with LLMs and everything that we're going with, some of the other models. There's some things outside of LLMs that we play with, but stay out of that for now. But the biggest thing is we don't have the best interface that we could possibly have. And I have a chip developed that lets me put a little NFC reader over it that we were playing with before. A buddy of mine, and I'll show the actual cool pictures. I made a friend here in Chicago. He's a chip designer that does some crazy things. So he was able to just bust this out. We sat in, uh, what is it, OpenCAD and all those other ones and just made a file for this thing, shipped it out, got it printed in like a week. I didn't realize PCB development was like that. Also, side tangent, I completely forgot to even show off this thing. This was the original prototype when we were building these things. The idea was to be able to scan an NFC reading chip or a device and have it run some kind of AI operation or some kind of execution on the actual board itself. So you see, this is one of those NFC tags and these are the things that are in all those spinners I'll show you guys in a second. But if I scan these, you'll see if I come back over here, on the actual site, we can trigger events and tr monitor what's going on from a tag and we can have it all going off remotely. That's just plugged in over there. But really cool tech, quick, quick, quick side note. One of the biggest, the coolest things from this is that it has an LED panel on it. So if I plug it in here, we can start to see this thing will light up and start going. Now this is attached to Wi-Fi. This actually does something kind of cool while I'm developing. So I have it hooked into the runtime hooks on this. So I don't even have to have a terminal anymore when I'm developing. I can watch all the page refreshes, all the other stuff as little LED indicators on here. So as the page refreshed and these things load, and even if I put an error into the code, it'll flash different colors and go. But this was something really, really cool. This is actually a connector we added on bricks. So I guess I'll show you show you something real quick on this. 
but it's a connector we added on Bricks that it lets me do coding for the actual expressive IDE. And oh my God, has this saved me time? It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> this entire chip and the entire sequence that's running on this chip was completely coded by AI. So I had to do nothing besides actually get the boards made to actually make a cool thing that we can use in, in live production. Laser crystal and all this stuff is just a, just a touch from me. Uh, this is something cool. I just wanted to buy an optic crystal. These are pretty cheap on Amazon if you want to get one. But these are for splitting beams of light. Cool stuff. Kind of it's <laughs> on brand is the best way to say it. But this is actually the space we've been working out of, primarily what we're building. Um, let's keep most of, it, most of it down for this. But I want to show you guys something really cool. I know I love 3D printing and it's something we do a bunch. There are, I've been printing these things. There are hundreds and hundreds of these floating around in Chicago right now. I have the thing running on like mass production. I'll put a picture of the Bamboo Lab studio in here. But these are really cool. These are a print and place part that I also added a actual NFC tag to. So when people grab one of these, they can just tap it to their phone and then just start going. And of course, me being me, I printed a, uh, a big version too. These are the actual display piece versions, I guess. But I don't know, fun, fun, cool stuff. This is the office space we've been building out of. It is absolutely amazing. During the day here, there's a bunch of people that come in and out. Even for the company, we've been able to do like hundreds of reviews of the things we're working on, trying to just get feedback. And this is why I'm pretty excited. We're getting to a point with the feedback where we really need to start taking feedback from more than just the people in person and the people that might actually start using this tech. And it's getting me kind of excited because I've showed this off and we're starting up a Discord and some other things too that have been running in the background for the actual community ones that are outside of all the enterprise and everything else that's going. Um, and people are just building cool things. And it's just some of the stuff and some of the ideas I have, I can't wait because if I can just push off a crazy idea, start some of the prompt engineering and then send it off to the community to make it actually work, it is going to be amazing. <laughs> Besides that, life is going good. Life is going great. And I'm excited. It's We're, we're playing with like it almost feels like we're playing with future tech right now. We're playing with tech that I feel like no one really understands or grasps the actual ability of these AIs or understands the full potential of what you can do with some of these things. And the beauty of bricks, and this is kind of another way I've been able to explain it to people, we actually have a real way of debugging agents. And if you're not an AI nerd, you don't really get that. It's not gonna make much sense. In the future, it might. But this was one of the biggest things, and I, I guess I built it out of necessity without originally understanding the purpose. But having the ability to fine tune and debug an agent or a recursive event event that's running inside AI, when I say is invaluable, it is invaluable. It lets you actually dig into some of the weird operations and processes that are going and actually fix them. One of the biggest things, and this is what we're dealing with a lot when it comes to the business, is businesses do not want hallucinations at all cost, none. And if you're trying to try to build a recursive agent and rely on, on prompt engineering and, and itself, to fix that problem, good luck to start. Um, and that's that's kind of why you haven't seen all these auto GPTs and all these things in the wild. There's this weird concept, and this is something we haven't proven scientifically yet, but a lot of trials, and I, I play with this stuff every day, so it's somewhat, somewhat scientific and scientific in my head, but when you start mixing fully generated responses, so something that's completely generated by an AI with something that's partially generated by AI versus all human generated, the results that come out are are, diff are interesting and different. Like the partial is when you have like a chat sequence when you're, you're talking to, hey, then AI responds and you say something. When you start automating the full process of that chat sequence, it's almost like, and this is this is gonna sound weird with saying it like this, but it's almost like the AI understands that the text is AI generated and it leads into these weird recursive holes that I, I mean, I personally don't understand. But at a, at a top level, that's, I guess, my theory on what's happening and why this way that we're doing with bricks just works so much better. But I could be wrong. And in the near future, when we have some more powerful models, we'll only be able to amplify them even further. This is the beauty of the company we're building right now. A lot of people are trying to solve the problem of better AIs and better LLMs by just building a bigger LLM, fine tuning a model for something specific. When I think in theory, they should be fixing the actual core issue, which is the way you interact with the LLM, which is down to the prompt engineering. So, um, I'm excited. <laughs> but uh, if you want to check out more, the, the site's currently live. There's some beta stuff going on right now. So if you log in, you can still use it. There's not really much uh, when it comes to community docs and support yet, which is what we're going to be building with all the Discord and all the other videos going out. But uh, yeah, that's about it. So I hope you're just as excited as me. 2024 is going to be an actual insane year. I can I can already tell. Uh, I can't wait till I can tell you guys a little more about what's going on and the internals in the business and everything else. Um, but once we start getting out of this stealth mode and, and start getting more public about the stuff we're doing, whew, uh, I'll even I'll even say I'll leave you on a little little crazy one. Um, okay, I can't I can't really say much, but. Okay, and also I'm gonna say something, and I, I, this, is, this is one of the, the bigger things we found. 
We may or may not have even found a novel security vulnerability inside these LLMs, and there's really no way to patch it, which is kind of spooky. But I hope I hope you enjoyed this quick video. It's a quick recap. I know it's kind of all over the place. I only have a couple minutes here. I'm getting ready for the New Year's, and I'm going to get out of the office. It is nighttime. Um, but that's about it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.